First, I would like to thank everyone for coming out on such a beautiful day as this to remember those who have fought and died for our freedoms. You see this memorial in front of you that's called the Star Garden, and there are flags here representing each of the branch of services of our armed forces. And in this beautiful work that has been done here, and we thank the people who have faithfully maintained it, this is a wonderful memorial to all who have served. Let us remember them. Let us be together in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for our country and our community, for the freedoms that we hold dear. And Lord, we now today remember those who helped to guarantee those freedoms. For without their sacrifice and service, we would not be a free people. Lord, we ask your blessing upon these ceremonies and upon all those whom we honor, upon their memory and upon their souls. And may you be with the families and friends who mourn their loss and who remember them so fondly. Lord, we pray that your spirit will continue to bless our town, all of our leaders and all who serve to serve each other, to serve one another as a community. And we ask your blessings also upon our nation and upon our nation's leaders and upon our world, O oh Lord, so that we may know peace in our hearts and in our world. Bless our efforts. We ask this all in your holy name. Amen. Thank you very much, and I apologize for the uh, disruption in the speaking order, but I promise you that we will also get to hear from Selectman Mary uh, very shortly, and I know that we all look forward to that as well. 
I'm honored to be here with all of you today and particularly want to note all of the citizens that have turned out today uh, as well as the band and the scouting groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, our veterans organizations, our veterans and our veterans families for what is truly an important day for our community, a day of remembrance and a day to express our gratitude and a day to remember as Reverend Bob noted that we live in the greatest nation on the face of this earth because of the ideals that we share of freedom and liberty and justice for all and because there are people throughout our history from generation to generation from year to year from day to day who put on the uniform of this country and stand for those ideals and stand so much for them that they are willing to make sacrifices to be away from their families to suffer the wounds that are incurred in war, physical and psychological, and some that we will never know, but which they bear each and every day. They do that for us. And in the doing of those courageous and heroic acts, they make us special people in the history of this world. They make us citizens of a United States. A United States that sends its men and women to battle not from force or coercion, but because we share the common purpose of wanting liberty and freedom and justice for all, for ourselves and for all of the people who inhabit this earth. And so it is appropriate that we take a moment in time to revisit that place that is uniquely American and in our hearts to be able to say to our veterans, thank you. We remember, we remember all of the sacrifice we remember the sacrifice of our Gold Star families and our other families who have lived and will live without family members because they went forth on our behalf in the name of freedom and democracy. And it is time as well, generation to generation, for us to stand up as a Commonwealth of Massachusetts and to say that we will not only remember in word, but we'll remember in deed. And that's why I'm proud to represent to you and to report to you that just this week, the Massachusetts Senate and the Massachusetts House passed something called the Valor Act. A set of laws which when signed into law will work to make sure that veterans are given academic credit for what they have learned and earned while they're in uniform. A bill that will give veterans as many as $1,000 of property tax relief for their continued volunteer service in our communities. And a bill that will ensure that our human service agencies work tirelessly and relentlessly and seamlessly to make sure that veterans can deal with issues of homelessness and economic hardship and being able to deal if they have them with issues of things like substance abuse. That is the commitment that our legislature has made in your name and in all of our names to support these individuals who began as our neighbors and who moved into the pages of history as the heroes and the courageous, courageous stewards of this legacy that we share of liberty and justice for all. It's an honor to be with, here with you as we remember them as we thank them, and as we rededicate ourselves, I hope, to saying, how can I do something every day, not just Memorial Day, but every day, to make sure that a veteran in my life, in my community, in my country, knows that I care about them. Just as it was their responsibility to defend us when they became part of the military, it's our responsibility to defend and support them as the stewards as well of the great legacy of being citizens of the greatest nation on the face of this earth. God bless them, God bless all of you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Welcome. On behalf of my colleagues and myself, it's heartfelt to see this nice crowd here today, and particularly the younger people. It's been a while since we've actually fought a, a real war. Not that the one in Afghanistan and Iran are not real. They certainly are. What I want to 
talk to you today is about some history of Memorial Day. Some of you that know me uh, know that I kind of lean towards the history side of things. So we have here today is Memorial Day. On this day, May 28, 2012, Americans across the nation and citizens located around the world will pause throughout the day to observe Memorial Day. Since its official observation on May 5th, 1868, when it was called Declaration Day, it has been a day of remembrance for those who sacrificed and died in our nation's service. And while it was originally dedicated to honor Civil War soldiers, we know it today as, as a celebration in memory of all who fought for, for and defended our right to freedom. In 1968, the observation of this day was established to be the last Monday in May. Today it remains a time of observation to honor and to respect those who fought to protect the liberties that our founding fathers proclaimed with certainty in the Declaration of Independence and that was thoughtfully and carefully framed Constitution of the United States. In his proclamation to set aside this day in 1868, General Logan instructed there be thoughts to cherish tenderly the memories of our heroic dead who with their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes. To those who died securing peace and freedom, to those who served in conflict to protect our land and sacrificed their dreams of a day to preserve the hope of our nation, keeping America the land of the free for over two centuries, we owe our thanks and honor it is important not to only recognize their service, but to respect their devotion to duty and to ensure that the purpose for which they fought will never be forgotten. For soldiers who fought bravely during the American Revolution to the men and women of today's armed forces, America's fighting forces have responded bravely to this nation's call to duty. Both on the battlefield and their assurance of readiness, members of the nationals National military remain bound to their duty. For more than 200 years, America's armed forces have been the surest guarantee that freedom will continue to be ringing across this land, from sea to shining sea. The lives of the men and women who fought in America's battles and who served their country in support of the military made significant sacrifice in fighting for the freedom and liberty that we enjoy today. Too often we fail to remember those who gave their lives or those whose life today bears the scars as a lasting memory of that sacrifice and commitment. But there are many who remember vividly as the lives affected their sons, daughters, friends, co-workers, and neighbors. And that their self unselfish sacrifice was made with assurance that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness required the ultimate service to their nation. When you go home, tell them for us and say, for their tomorrow, we gave our today. In a very moving letter, President Abraham Lincoln expressed the respect and consolation of a nation and his compassion to Mrs. Bixby, who lost five sons in combat during the Civil War. Mr. Lincoln's letter expressed the compassion that he felt with the honor due the fallen soldiers. The letter is, Dear Madam, I have been shown the files that you are the mother of five sons who have died graciously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming but I cannot refrain from tendering to you the consolidation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may surge in anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the love and loss and the soul pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Abraham Lincoln. In the Revolutionary War, more than 25,000 lost their lives in this pursuit of freedom that they believed in but could only have 
but could not have fully comprehended at that time? In the Civil War, almost 600,000 gave their lives as the very foundation of this nation was challenged within its own boundaries. World War II claimed the lives of more than 400,000, and scores of others gave their lives in wars in Korea and in Vietnam. And America continues to realize the never-ending sense of duty that our armed forces have as they served our nation throughout the world. In each instance, without regard to politics or the popular opinion of the moment, soldiers have picked up their arms to begin the awareness, the awesome, I'm sorry, awesome task of fighting for our freedom and to push back the threat of those freedoms when made by others throughout the world. During the Revolutionary War, the Stars and Stripes flew high as a symbol of freedom and providing inspiration to Francis, Francis Scott Keyes, inscribed the words of the Star Spangled Banner. And while we remember so vividly the first verse, it is the third verse that I believe honors the soldiers who fought for that flag and who stand ready to defend it today should the nation call for their service. third verse. Oh, thus be ever when free men shall stand between their loved homes and war's dissolution. Blessed victory and peace may the heaven rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved as a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause is just. And this be our motto. In God is our trust. Our flag is truly a symbol of the freedom that we fight so diligently to protect. From Key's vision of bombs bursting through the morning air to the courageous memory of Marines raising a flag at Iwo Jima. The American flag is a symbol of freedom that we celebrate and hold sacred. Let it also remind each of us in the sacrifice made by men and women throughout our nation so that this flag could stand tall. And let us not forget that we will never see it wave as a nation of free people because of the lives that we honor on this Memorial Day. On September 11th, 2001, the United States of America was, for the second time in its history, attacked by an act of war that was unprovoked and cowardly. Our resolve was tested and we demonstrated to the world that our passion for freedom and liberty will never be lost. In the midst of a confusion and misdirected plan of enemies throughout the world, our military forces were once again called upon to protect our country from an enemy that is entrenched in hatred and bias against our country and the freedom for which it stands. President Bush proclaimed the event and the resolve of this nation to bring defeat to the enemy that attacked our nation with words of assurance. We're going to find those evildoers those barbaric people who attacked our country and we're going to hold them accountable. And we're going to hold the people who house them accountable. The people who think they can provide them safe havens will be held accountable. The people who feed them will be held accountable. In each instance, we're called upon to defend the rights of this nation, to enjoy the liberty of freedom. The American soldier has responded courageously, whether it was World War II, and rallied to support around the world are in Vietnam during a time of disruption and confusion among the people of our nation. Or even today when the war in Iraq and Afghanistan provokes similar confusion and disagreement among the citizens, it is imperative that each of us show our respect for the soldiers who fought and to remember the sacrifice made by each, for it is their dedication to duty that will ensure each call of duty is responded to with assurance of victory over every threat to our freedom. Our land has been truly blessed and honored with veterans who have given their lives to ensure that we have the freedom to enjoy the blessings given to us by God and assured in liberty by the vision of our founding fathers. Lee Greenwood sings a practically sentimental song with the assurance that we would gladly stand up and defend America today. God bless the USA.
And today we should each, and today as we should, each day we say bless, God bless those who have given their lives to make America strong and to those who remain prepared to fight for our country today. President Ronald Reagan has a quote, no arsenal, no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and free women. The men and women who serve and who have served in the armed forces are no less committed to protect our nation than the men who signed the Declaration of Independence. Their words declared that to the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually agree to each other's lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Our armed forces continue to maintain that same standard of commitment and honor that was dedicated two centuries ago. On this Memorial Day, please take a moment and pause to, to just what has been given and sacrifice so freely so that freedom can ring across our great land. Thank you.
place this wreath in memory of all the volunteer firefighters, the Rowley Volunteer Fire Protection Association, and the Rowley Fire Department, who have served our community with honor. We honor their memory. And salute. You know, it's often said that Americans have a very short memory, that we are fickle, shallow. All of you here today prove that that is not the case for all Americans. For you have taken the time to remember, to come here on this beautiful day, to spend this time together here. I think it is such a wonderful thing to see everyone remembering those who have fallen in the cause of freedom. To see you here today, our Triton band must be very hot in those uniforms. And we know before this you were marching in Salisbury. You've put in a wonderful day's work and it is a tribute to our fallen heroes and all that you have done. Thank you. And to our Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, you prove that we do not forget because you are being taught the importance of being an American citizen and the value of our history and how we are each of us part of something larger than just ourselves. I thank you all, your leaders and your families, for your devotion to our community and to our nation. You are our future, and we thank God for each of you. And to our veterans, if it were not for you, we would not be here. You know, I'm often approached by veterans, and I always make a point of thanking them. I grew up around veterans. My father served in World War II in the Pacific. I grew up around Marine Corps veterans from Iwo Jima. Incredible men. And they taught me so much about the value of sacrifice. I've had many veterans whom I've thanked said, well, you know, I wasn't overseas or I was here at home or I was behind the lines or I was just a company clerk. I want each and every one of our veterans here to know when you put on that uniform, no matter where you serve, you are making a sacrifice. For you are saying, I am going to commit years of my life, blood, sweat, and tears to defend our freedom, our Constitution, and the freedom of the world. That is a sacrifice. So I thank you veterans. Those who have served in combat especially deserve our heartfelt thanks. And those who have supported them and have stood in times of peace and war, we owe you all a debt of gratitude. Thank you. And to those who stand to protect our community and its citizens, and our police department and fire department. As you can tell, I'm a little biased in this direction. But I can tell you that 
We would not have a safe and as good a community if it were not for the men and women who serve us in our Rowley Police Department and Rowley Fire Department. So we thank you all for your continuing service to our community. And you, citizens of our community, our political leaders, our elected officials, all of you together make this town what it is. And I don't know if you realize this, but you are what and who the people who died for our nation sacrificed for. It's so that we could gather here on this day and every day in our schools and in our churches, in our community centers, in our Council on Aging, at the town hall, at the library, at all of these wonderful places that make Rowley what it is. Those who have died, died so that we could enjoy this life and this freedom. I want to thank you all for being such a wonderful community of friends and neighbors. You have taken the time to be here today, and that speaks volumes about your character and about your appreciation for who we are as a community and a nation. You deserve our thanks as well. You can applaud yourself, it's okay. I would like to close by talking about our flag. You know, I started this, my commentary here by saying that Americans are often accused of being forgetful or having short memories, especially when it comes to the memories of those who have served and died in our service to our country. Well, my dad, as I mentioned, who was a World War II veteran, he taught me a very important lesson about the American flag. And I'd like to impart that to all of you, and perhaps it may help you to reflect on the symbol that we cherish, that we pledge our allegiance to. That flag represents to me the lives of all those who have served our nation, those living and those dead, going all the way back to the founding of our country in the Revolutionary War. When I look at that flag, I can see their faces. I can remember their lives, their hopes and their dreams, all that they ha held in their hearts and how they made that sacrifice so that that flag could fly freely and proudly and so that we could be a free people. So I ask you today, when you go back to your homes and your families and friends and your barbecues and cookouts and all the special things that you will do, if you're flying a flag at your home or if you have, a, have flags that are decorating your yard, just pause for a moment and look at that flag and give thanks to God for the men and women that it represents. May God always bless us with freedom. May God bless those who have stood and fought and died for our freedoms and those who continue to now even in Afghanistan and around the world. And may God continue to bless this wonderful town of Rowley and all who call it home. And let the people say, Amen. Thank you. The Triton High School Band will now play God Bless America.
Hold up. Uh. Hold up. Uh. Ready. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Hold up. Uh. That concludes our ceremonies. Thank you all for coming.